What is your last name? Borowski. Again? Say it again? Borowski. Borowski. Yeah. I'll introduce yeah. you by your first name and you will say your last oh, name. Oh, either Let's way. Let's do that. Okay. <laughs> so, I want to say New Jersey also, just so people that are watching from Chicago. Yeah, sure. We could say New Jersey. I'm not editing any of this out now at this point because this is fun. This is fun. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> So we are at One Willow in Highlands, New Jersey. One Willow at Highlands, New Jersey. Welcome to Biz Talk, the show. I am here with Lauren Borowski. Because I will butcher <laughs> that. Um, and I am Eric. I am your quasi part-time host because I'm pretty sure I'm going to get somebody else to take this job. Um, so Lauren, thank you for being with us. Uh, we met you at our event, Procurement Con. Mm -hmm. um, we know you're active. You are out promoting your business all the time. I've seen some of your other interviews, mm -hmm. right? Caught yeah. some of those. Um, and you are heavy into networking and getting the word out because you have a really, really unique um, thing. And, and I think like, right, don't you have the steel spinny things we used to throw our sisters off of? Yeah, we launched children yeah. over, yeah. No, <laughs> no, that's, that's not it at all. <laughs> <laughs> That's the comment I left on one of your socials. I'm like, oh, great. We oh, I did that see that. Yeah, that was you. <laughs> yeah, Thank you for you. that. You're Thank welcome. You. <laughs> um, so uh, I, I know that uh, from what I read, uh, you um, your, your company is Child's Play Challenge Courses, yes, but it's it not just for children. No. Okay. Um, and uh, you and your husband started this back in like 2014, right? 15. 2015. Yeah. And um, if I'm not mistaken, this kind of started in your driveway. Yeah, you could say that. Right? Yes, it did. So why don't you give mm -hmm. us a little brief on that? I will. So, so Child's Play Challenge Courses. So it's a mobile obstacle course business for all ages, all abilities, um, with, dedicated to keeping folks of all ages healthy, active, in a fun and motivational setting. So the way it all came about was uh, my husband, Matthew, was working at our local gym as a fitness instructor, and he was working in the child care center. And a parent came up to him one day and said, you are so good with these kids. Will you do an activity at my block party? Please just <laughs> come and keep them busy. So we're thinking about, okay, what are we going to do? And I know that he's into Tough Mudders and Spartans, and he, <clears throat> he also loves to build things, and he's creative. So I said, okay, why don't you build an obstacle course? Just threw the idea out, and he did. So he, in our driveway, like you said, got some supplies and built this very small version of what we currently have. We threw it in the trunk of the car. We went out to this block party, and this was back in 2015, and uh, everybody loved it. I mean, he had designed certificates and prizes for the out. kids because he's also graphic design, so he was able to do all that. And kids and adults, everyone was playing on these obstacles, and they were having the time of their life. And people came up to us that day, and they were like, do you do birthday parties? Do you come to uh -huh. schools? And we were like, no, we don't do anything else. Like, we thought it was a one day. That was it. Have, have some fun that day. But that was it. We knew. We just knew we had a business there. Right. And we said, okay, this, this is going to be something. And we didn't know how big it was going to be, but we knew we had something. Yeah, and, so. and, and how have you grown since then? Oh, it's been tremendous, the growth. I mean, and this is currently is the biggest year we've ever had right now. I mean, we started out, um, so we started out on a slow roll, you know, with some friends that we had that had, oh, I, I have a friend who owns a camp and my daughter works in a school. So we started, you know, going out and doing these little events and uh, got bigger, word of mouth, it kept growing. So it's a mobile obstacle course that comes to you. So it's indoors and outdoors, all ages. So we were doing birthday parties and we block parties and camps and school programs and street fairs and carnivals. We partnered up with our local um, town to do Rockin' for Autism. We were on their planning committee. We brought it out to that. This was all in the beginning. And it just kept getting bigger by word of mouth. So then in 2018, we took a chance. Uh, we spent a little bit of money and we went to the Tri-State Camp Conference in Atlantic City, three-day event. And I mean, the camp directors went crazy for it. Okay. They had never seen anything like it. We love this. And we started going um, in the, all over the tri-state that okay. summer. And it just, like I said, it kept growing. In 2019, we went to an event planning expo and an event planning company fell in love with us. And they bring us into high profile events with Viacom and American Express and big clients like that. We're nice. going right into the conference rooms in the city for the holiday parties and bringing what we do. So. Uh, so yeah, it just, it grew every year, you know, just get bigger and bigger, so. It's fantastic. Yeah. So I'm gonna cut us really quick here. Sure. And I um, just wanna make sure. You can't patent this idea. I mean, we're, the name is trademarked, okay, and, and our little slogan and all that crush the horse. But I mean, you could, 
it's just you know is it worth the expense you can reverse engineer just about anything yeah, right. and it's not about the obstacles it's about the experience that we provide what we're bringing because we're not just setting up equipment and leaving it or renting it or something like that we're bringing just a whole curriculum a whole activity make sure i keep checking us. that battery because those you know. things suck batteries <laughs> the recorder down uh -huh. here just sucks life logistics planning operations my whole background yeah so i mean i worked in television and the performing arts for 30 years you know with stage manager production manager operations manager <laughs> thank you um so i bring all of that to it you know the management of the whole business so good mm -hmm. i probably won't edit any of this out because that was some good stuff oh, fantastic. Um, <laughs> i didn't know I just, we were still rolling well we're gonna be careful around here yeah, yeah be careful around here you just don't know what we're gonna keep we're gonna well that's the thing we we're, we're obviously mm -hmm. i don't want this to be as i want to try to keep because mm -hmm. there's so much valuable information mm -hmm. that you and business people bring to you and other entrepreneurs mm -hmm. bring to the table um and uh one of the things you said to me, and we are, this is still moving, mm -hmm. we're still hot. Um, one of the things you said, you were talking about, you've done block parties, birthday parties, you've gone to these corporate events, mm -hmm. you know, uh, holiday parties. And I think you and I, when we were at the uh, conference, you also talked about team building. Yeah. You do team building. So we, we, we get out of the, the party stuff and now we get into, you know, some serious professional business exercises mm -hmm. of, you know, those trust exercises, I guess, are, yeah. are a part of it. Right. So tell us a little bit about that. I mean, everywhere we go, we're providing an experience, even at the smallest event, at the smallest birthday party. I mean, we're all about bringing people together beyond the reliance of social media and excessive screen time. Mm -hmm. Unplug and play. Kids and adults, they need more than computers. They need face-to-face. -face. Right. So that's a very big part of what we do. But there are so many different exercises we do with team building. The thing is, what's beautiful about it is it's all abilities. So you don't have to be an athlete. You don't have to be specially trained to go through the obstacles. You don't. So when we do the corporate and or the school team building, team building in the camps, it's a very big part of it. Um, and we can, we can play with themes, we can break people into groups, we can time the team going through, we can give them activities where they're maybe carrying a sandbag or a medicine ball through and they have to like work out how do we get this through the obstacles. You know, we're always trying different ways to do it and we bring music and maybe we'll have them do a dance off, an impromptu dance off to see who goes first or bring out the tug of war rope, you know, to see which team is going to go first or who gets the added, you know, advantage in the next round that we yeah. do. So. We just, we play, you know, and bring, bringing games. We do Nerf Wars, so we're bringing that out, and dodgeball. And Nerf Wars? <laughs> <laughs> you know, so we just, Nerf, yeah, all of that. So, nice. uh, so many. Dodgeball, you want to play dodgeball? <laughs> it's, uh, we'll, yeah, we'll be we, there. We should. We'll Honestly, there. we should talk, we, we should talk to you uh -huh. once we line up the venue. We should, because that's the one thing about mm -hmm. us, is we don't yeah. want these, we don't want to have stuffy, um, business conferences mm -hmm. right where everybody's yeah. in their blue shirt and white tie or black tie and yeah. all unhappy and we're going to the next one we're going to, we want excitement um so yeah we definitely this is something we yeah. should definitely talk talk to you more about yeah we could bring it <laughs> team building exercises over <laughs> there would be great yeah so so you definitely got us on the spot now <laughs> <laughs> so um yeah so the team building and um I, I mean so you're really running the gamut and keeping a lot of people off of the uh off of their phones their nose out of their phones yeah. um i can't tell you how many times i've ridden a train i was in a train one time what was that? i forget where i was going i was going mm -hmm. to atlantic city i was in the train and i paused for a minute and counted yeah. how many people w had yeah. their phones and i think there was 34 people in the car Mm -hmm. in the train car and out of the 34 me and three other people weren't looking at our phones yeah i mean it's me too though yeah. like i'm addicted I'm guilty, to my yeah. phone it's you know i know yeah right? my husband That's and i'll do that because we, we're together all that we run this business together yeah, so we're uh, together all the time so sometimes we'll just go <laughs> and it's like we, we talk to each other all day but you, got, <laughs> you have the, you have the past <laughs> you work together with your husband and then yeah. you also run a whole physical non-technical yeah. business so yeah mm. you know what you get the past sometimes we will very guilty of that sometimes but uh <laughs> You know, it's just, but it is important. The power of physical play yeah. is so important and it always will be, you know, yeah. you always need that. Yeah. I mean, I wish we had what I have when I was a kid. I was not athletic at all. The most unathletic child you can imagine. I hated gym class. I was picked last for every team. It was awful. And, uh, and so when we do our events, I see them, the kids that were me. And they're, oh, at, they're at every event, every camp, every school, every birthday. 
and we have the soccer stars and we see them we know who they are we love those guys you know and then but then we have the kids who are afraid and you hold their hand through the obstacles and they're sweating and they're shaking a little but the beauty of it is every time they go through they get a little better and they start to let go of your hand they start to gain confidence and by the end of it because it's a session like i said it's yeah. an experience you're not just going through once it's a whole you know thing that we're building with them and they're doing everything and they're just as good as everybody around them so i like to think that we made a difference that day i like to think that they went home knowing that they could be just as good as the soccer star as anybody else and wow. maybe that's something that's really going to help them you know we we'll, i like to say that we change lives by challenging limits at at even having the kids with us or the adults with us for a short period of time i think that i hope that we make a difference for them so change yeah. lives by what challenging is, by ch limits is what we lies by challenging limits it's what we we hope it's we do a great, it's a great <laughs> slogan it's a great slogan change lies by challenging limits Absolutely. i'm gonna i'm gonna that's what I'm it's all about stuck on that for the rest of the day <laughs> um and and, and I, I guess that, that that sparks a question mm -hmm. in in my head is like because you said you're holding the hands of of these children who are scared um and adults i hold their adults, hands too yeah. right and you know fear is a big factor and a, a reason why we don't do a lot of things mm -hmm. right and, and and when it comes to small businesses yeah there's a lot of people with a lot of good ideas that never do anything yeah. because they're afraid to risk and take that risk mm -hmm. um so you know you clearly took a risk you 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 saw you had a business there mm -hmm. but let's go back a little bit in time at what point did you go oh shit should should we be doing this like was there a moment where you paused and you thought about like this is a risk we're going to take you mm -hmm. know here's my x number of years of career doing this yeah and so talk to us a little bit about that moment where it was like you were you questioned if this was what yeah. you're really going to do and how did you go forward on that i mean i think there were a few moments and you know i don't think we thought about it much to be honest with okay. you. i think what happened was we we had this idea and we thought we didn't think it was going to be that big at first we thought okay this is a great thing for my husband matt make some extra money, build an obstacle course, do some extra events, make some money on the side. So it wasn't like a major decision, like we're all in. It wasn't like that. It was like a slow grow. And then as it got bigger and bigger, I kept my corporate job. Like I- Come I here, Jen. <laughs> you gotta hear this, Jen. Come here. Okay. Sorry. How, how we didn't think about anything. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> we just, keep, keep talking. So, but, so I kept my corporate job and I loved it. I was working in television and the performing arts for 30 years. I was in my current business for 24 years. Production manager, stage manager, operations manager, event manager. I was doing all that, working 100 hours a week. The business is getting bigger and bigger. I'm getting burnt out. And then, you know, so I guess the turning point was COVID, right? So COVID came and it changed a lot of things. And what happened with me was I got furloughed from my job. Right. So for the first time, I was able to dedicate a hundred percent. Yes, pull up a chair. <laughs> hear my story. Hear my story. So for the first time in my life, I could donate or dedicate a hundred percent of my time to our business. I was furloughed. I felt amazing. I felt so free. And I always thought prior to that, you needed a full-time job, steady paycheck, yeah. steady income, benefits, all of that. And what it taught us, because our business flourished during the pandemic, we were bigger than ever, and I can get into all those details, but what it taught us was that we didn't need anybody else. Yeah. We had all the security we needed, and when I was able to focus 100%, I, I blew it up with, with Matt, with my husband. I mean, we own it together. So, um, so I think that was a real turning point for us. And you know, I, I ended up, I was called back to my job after furlough. I was given a major promotion, a major raise. I went back, but my heart was, I knew where my heart was. And so about a year later, I said, no, this is it. I'm all in. Let's franchise this business. Let's make it bigger than ever, which is the step we're working on right now. And you so know. the reason I wanted you to come in yeah. is because, mm -hmm. uh, and, and I know this is your interview, but this yeah. is, is the, this, uh -huh. there's a relationship here mm -hmm. to both of what you experienced because mm -hmm. You were a teacher, right, Jen? And we're going to be interviewing Jen in yeah. a bit. Mm -hmm. And um, you decided you you, you, were, you were going to start this side hustle, yeah, right? And it, it mm -hmm. so right, it was it was oh, this is just a small business. I'll be yeah. able to relax. That That's suddenly what... blows <laughs> yeah, it up. Blew up. Yes. Yeah, it I, blows up. Yeah. When I opened here, here created here, mm -hmm. here, I said I really anticipated being a lot more lazy <laughs> because as yeah. a music teacher for yeah. thirty-two years. 
um, I could coordinate yeah. the orchestra, the band, yeah. the um, choir, mm -hmm. and coordinate with the art show, the PTA spaghetti dinner, hustle these six yeah. 600 kids on and off the stage, um, pretty much by myself. So I figured, oh, this is going to be easy. Mm -hmm. Event planning is going to be super easy. I'm not going to, it's going to be not a problem <laughs> at all. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to mic you up. You could take over the interview. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You, know, you hold that. Okay. You take over the chair. This is just, I think this is going to be a better <laughs> conversation than me and you. No offense. I just think it's more. Well, you can stay if you want. You don't, <laughs> no, I'm going to uh, look at the back Okay. So, oops, let me squish that guy. Um, all right. So, mm. when you decided to leave your corporate, was it corporate world? Uh, I worked at New Jersey Performing Arts Center. I was a founding staff member. I was there for 24 years. I loved it there. Oh, okay. I loved my job. Okay. I really did. But then, I never knew what it was going to be like to own my own business and when I got a feel mm -hmm. for that, living life on your own terms and, and, and making your policies and your procedures and yeah, you, you know what I mean, it, it was just such a different feeling that, you know, I knew where my heart was after a while, you know. And you get to make your own rules and yeah. you think, oh wow, this is going to be great. So let me ask mm -hmm. you a question. What was the first rule that you had to make as your own business owner that you're like, Oh, all these rules were made for me before and I could follow someone else's policy. Oh shoot, I need this rule in my business. <laughs> what was the first rule that you had to make in your own business? Oh, I don't know. I don't know if I remember the first rule, but I will tell you that now that we've moved into franchising, it mm -hmm. actually added a little of layer to that because I think all the rules were in my head, you know, and all the policies and procedures were in our heads and we have a team of about over the summer, we had maybe about 20 gig-based workers that work wow. with us. So, I mean, I had so many, I had such a great foundation from working mm -hmm. at NJPAC for so long that I basically knew all the policies I needed to bring in, the procedures and the staffing and the scheduling mm -hmm. and all of that. But, but when we decided to franchise, I had to put it all on paper, which I had never done before. So I guess it's okay. like formalizing everything and tying up all those mm -hmm. loose ends was... Uh, was a little bit of a challenge actually to say, oh, we don't have a formal job description. Oh, we don't have a formal, we didn't have, you know, things like that laid out. So, uh, so, so yeah. Making everything, writing it all down, writing it putting all down. it down on paper. Yeah. So now you have a policy book. Yeah, we have a huge operations manual that, uh, and I used to write operations manuals at NJPAC, which was kind of mm -hmm. funny. I thought, oh, it's a piece of cake writing it for my own business. And then I was like, oh. <laughs> and I have, we have consultants mm -hmm. that are incredible that guide us through the whole process of doing that. But it was uh, a little more challenging than I thought it was going to be, you know, doing okay. it for ourselves. So. so let me ask you a question, another question. Sure. Um, you just said, I mm. have cons we have consultants. Yes. So did you contact another business and say, hey, listen, I have a problem or a question. I don't really know what to do. Or did you kind of just go out and find your consultants? So trial and error. Two things. So we, in the very beginning, when we knew it was going to be a popular, we knew we had a great idea, mm -hmm. but we didn't have any experience running a bit like owning our own business. Okay. So we actually went to, so the Small Business Administration has small business development centers. There's mm -hmm. a, uh, 11 of them in the state of New Jersey free counseling, incredible. So that was mm -hmm. one of the things we did for counseling. We went to our local center at the time, it was at Kane University, okay. met with a brilliant, and he's still our friend to this day, even though he's retired, I'll still call him with questions, mm -hmm. um, brilliant man, David Margulies, and he, in the beginning stages, really guided us, held our hands, said, okay, why don't you try this direction, or yes, you're doing, you're on the right path. Like he, okay. he infor reinforced a lot, answered a lot of questions. And then when we decided to become a franchise, that's a whole other world. And you don't have to have a consultant. If you want to franchise your business, I mean, maybe you could, you could do it on your own, but I wouldn't mm -hmm. recommend it. So we had been thinking about being a franchise for a okay. while. And we were doing a birthday party and someone came up mm -hmm. to us and asked us, as, as people always do, hey, mm -hmm. are you a franchise? And we were mm -hmm. like, no, but actually we're, we're at the point now where we actually want to do this. And mm -hmm. he said, we have great consultants that I know of, SMB Consultants out of Pennsylvania okay. is who we work with. So, you know, we interviewed them and they were a great mm -hmm. fit for us. So it's kind of how it happened, you know, organic growth and organic, you know, okay. organically. Yeah. So you mentioned mm -hmm. franchise and that somebody came up to you at a party and said, hey, are you a franchise? You, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Can we, maybe yeah. they were interested in doing it. Mm -hmm. What uh, operations do you have 
to mm -hmm. stop somebody from saying, oh, you know what, that's really cool. I, I bet you I could go do that. I mean, and that's to a take risk. It and run. It's a risk all the franchise businesses take, mm -hmm. you know, because we are handing over our manual, we're handing over our, here, here's everything we do, you mm -hmm. know, because they'll, they'll need to do it for themselves. Mm -hmm. um, so I think every bis business runs that risk. Personally, the reason you want to be a franchise and you don't want to do exactly what you said is because we mm -hmm. made all the mistakes. We made a lot of mistakes and we spent a lot of money making mistakes. Mm -hmm. When you're franchising, they say be in business for yourself but not by yourself, right? Because uh, we're telling okay. you, here, here's what you do and here's what you don't do and you know, we're giving mm -hmm. you a playbook. So if somebody wants to, sees what we do and wants to knock it off on their mm -hmm. own, Good luck. <laughs> right. I, it's, our business is not for the faint of heart. It, it is a lot of moving pieces with what mm -hmm. we do. We've learned a lot along the way. And, uh, you know, I wish them lots of luck <laughs> if they, <laughs> they want to try to have their own mobile mm -hmm. obstacle course business. Like I said, it's, it's not an easy mm -hmm. undertaking. So become a franchise and we'll tell you how to do it. Right. So there's no, yeah. no need to reinvent the wheel. You can follow your playbook. Yeah, and that's what I would recommend. Yeah. Okay. From doing it ourselves, it's it's yeah, a and lot to it. So, from mm -hmm. a legal perspective, mm -hmm. if they're a franchise, what mm -hmm. kind of insurance do you have to carry to have a business like yours? I mean, we have our we have our general liability insurance. We have our workers' compensation. Um, you know, we um, it's not as terrible expensive as you would think you know because mm -hmm. our obstacles are not we don't have 10 foot high trusses or 20 foot high trusses mm -hmm. and zip lines and you know very high climbing walls everything we have is at a certain level where we fit into a certain category to be able okay. to have uh, a good insurance policy and it's very structured so it's more mm -hmm. of like a clinic style where we're not just opening up an obstacle course and kids are running pell-mell through it. I mean, it's very structured. It's the flow is, it's guided. Okay. There's a flow to it to keep people safe. So uh, very well thought out. There's a system in place for participant waivers. So folks sign a waiver. So we have, we have structure in place to All right, keep so it that you have your you have your franchise book, you have your yeah. insurance team, you have your legal team. Mm -hmm. Heaven yes, forbid do. something happens. <laughs> yes, we do. Um, mm -hmm. And so do you have, what is involved in writing your playbook? Mm -hmm. So do you, sorry, really loud <laughs> boat okay, in the background. Loud. <laughs> um, uh -huh. So do you, mm -hmm. did you write your own playbook or did you have a team of people to write it? No, I mean for our corporate business, we put all the policies and procedures in place ourselves. My husband, Matt, and I, we're a two-person show. With all of the experience I have in operations and logistics and planning, okay. all of his experience with children, running kids' activities, fitness instruction, building. Okay. I, I mean, we have this set of skills. We put them mm -hmm. all together, and we run our own everything. I mean, our own marketing. We write our own content on our website. We've designed and did our own website. We, oh, okay. I mean, everything that we have done, he builds the obstacles. So we didn't have anybody to tell us what to do or how to do it. Um, for the franchise, we have consultants to guide us, but they can't okay. write our manual. They can't write our playbook. They don't right. know what we do. They can just say, here's where you need this section. Here's where you need to talk about this. Here's where you need to talk about that. And they kind of give you the um, table of contents. You know what I mean? And you fill okay. in all the blanks. So. Uh, all right. So and yeah. how long have you been in business? So uh, I guess you could say, I guess it's eight years now. We started wow. in 2015 was when the concept came about. 2016 is when we had this the slow rollout with mm -hmm. small events 2018 is when we went tri-state started blowing up into different states we've been to eight states now okay we have um, over 400,000 people have been on our obstacle course oh, wow. um, we have a couple of trucks and we get calls from all over the country from people who just say we've never seen anything like this mm -hmm. please you know we want you to come to us and then we just can't reach some places mm -hmm. and that's when we said okay we need to franchise, franchise to expand to meet the demand is what we say so very to get it cool. out there and that's a new endeavor for us we're talking to some very good leads right now mm -hmm. some people who are very excited so um, right. and we're looking forward to that next journey of helping other people you know Mm -hmm. change their lives like we changed our own I mean this has mm -hmm. been an incredible experience for us and I want that for our franchisees mm -hmm. very nice and yeah. so how mm -hmm. does somebody get in touch with you if they want to book a party or mm -hmm. something so like uh, that? they can go they can email me at info at childsplaycc.com they can mm -hmm. go on the website childsplaycc.com you can find us on Facebook you can find us on Instagram you can find us on uh, LinkedIn so 
different ways to reach us. You can fill a form out on the website. There's a franchise website as well that you can okay. navigate to from the corporate website. And, and how many yeah. franchises are there currently? This is a brand new endeavor for oh, us. Oh, brand new? Yeah. Okay. It's exciting. We're talking to a bunch of people Very right exciting. Now. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you so much for letting thank me you. ask questions. Thank, <laughs> thank you. Thank you for hopping in. I so appreciate it. Thank you for hopping in. <laughs> Piece of advice. Yeah. I'm talking loud so the mic picks me up. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Piece of advice for someone just starting out like you, mm -hmm. small business, just starting out. Give us a piece of advice that you think is really important they need to know. I think the worst place you can be, I'm going to say a couple of things. I think the worst place you can be is stuck mm -hmm. in indecision, where you have one foot in one place, one foot in the next, you're stagnant, you're not doing anything, nothing is growing. I think that there mm -hmm. comes a point when if you know you've got an idea and you feel it in your gut, you need to move forward. Because when you do that, and like it happened for us, when you do that, you're going to have doors open, you're going to have opportunities, you're going to see synchronicities and coincidences, and, and you know what, that is, that's the universe. Mm -hmm. And it's telling you you're on the right path. So that's part of what I like to say to people is don't be stuck. The last thing you want is to find mm -hmm. yourself one year from now with the same great idea in the same exact position that you're in. 